Hello, everyone. All right. So I think I got everything set up here. All right. So hello, everyone. I am Laura from the Girl Scouts of Central Maryland program team. And today for our live stream, we are going to be doing a DIY Wednesday. Um, it is going to be the senior room makeover badge, um, but we are also putting in some steps from some of the other DIY um, badge sets for some of the younger girls. And I will go through all of those um, once we get to those steps. So first things first is we want to kind of get some inspiration for our DIY projects. Um, and so we're going to create a vision board. So for this step, you can either have access to the internet or um, you can use magazines that you like that have um, nice pictures in them. Um, what I'm going to be doing is I'm gonna be using Pinterest. Um, that's one of my favorite websites to go and look for look through when I'm looking for inspiration for projects, for um, really just anything that you can think of, you can probably find it on uh, Pinterest and it takes you right to the direct website. Um, so I just have my iPad here. I have um, the Pinterest app up on my iPad. All right, and so I am going to just search for DIY home decor projects and I'm just gonna yeah the DIY home decor projects I don't know if you guys can see that and then just a whole bunch of things are gonna pop up for some inspiration um so it has as you can see up on top it also has some different suggestions so creative ideas, wall decorations, upcycling, fun. How to make, let's do fun. And then it just gives me all kinds of options and then I can save them onto my, um, my vision board board on Pinterest. Um, and that's an easy way to just um, kind of save everything in one spot and then just be able to go back and look through it when you know when you're ready to actually start <laughs> your project um, another thing that you can be putting on your vision board is like um, color combinations that you like so I really like uh, more neutral colors um, so grays whites creams those sorts of things um, but then I also really like blues um, so I kind of always try to look for things that have kind of those a little bit more natural looking colors. Um, so I really enjoy things like that. Um, and you can um, put those in your search criteria as well. So that's always fun to try to do stuff like that. Um, another website that I really like to look through is Etsy. They have a lot of really cool um, do-it-yourself types of projects, or um, you can just kind of get inspiration from them as well. Um, so that is kind of just to get our juices flowing, to get thinking about some of the things that and projects that we want to create. So the next step that we are going to do is um, paint something. And so this step and the next step both kind of tied together. We are going to um, create a little fairy garden. Um, I thought that would be kind of fun, something that you can either put in your room or you could put outside in your own garden. Um, and so the first thing that we are going to do is um, rock painting. I think this is so fun. It just kind of brings a little bit of color into your garden or um, your garden outside or if you want to just have it in your room. I think that's fun as well. So what you're going to need for this one is paints. So any paints of your color. I have pink, blue, and green with me today. And then um, 
paint brushes, obviously. I have a couple different sizes. And then your rocks. So I just went outside to my little garden that I have out here and picked up some rocks and you know dusted all of the dirt off of them, obviously. Um, but I just got a couple different sizes, different shapes of rocks that we're going to paint. So I just got three kind of little ones. Um, I didn't want to get any of like the, the big ones that are kind of rough. These are all pretty smooth, which I think will make for a little bit of, you know, easier painting. So if anybody is just joining us, we are doing the room makeover badge for seniors. Um, but they all also incorporate some steps from some of the younger girl badges that are also in the do-it-yourself category. Um, so this one actually, painting rocks, um, that goes along with the junior gardener badge. Um, so step five is to build a garden. And so that's what we're doing with um, this current step that we're on and the next step that we are going to be doing. Um, so again, we have our paints, our rocks, and our paintbrushes. I also have just like a little cup of water that I'm gonna be using. Um, so you can either paint um, phrases and things on your rocks, or you can paint just colors and different designs. So I think I'm gonna do uh, one that's just a design and then maybe put a, you know a nice word on this one that's a little bit bigger. I also put down um, newspaper and and paper towels just so that I'm not you know getting anything on the table. So I would also love if you guys would comment where you're watching from. I know that yesterday we had a lot of people from Central Maryland, but we also had some people from outside of Central Maryland. And that was really cool to kind of see where we are, where people are watching from. I'd love to see those comments from you guys. Pink is not coming out too well, so I might have to switch colors. Got a little goopy in there. Maybe I'll just do blue. There we go. That one's coming out a little bit better. And I'll do a little bit of green too. So again, this satisfies the steps for the um, senior room makeover badge and also the junior gardener badge. So either way, so I have this little rock here, nice and smooth. And I'm just gonna paint him blue. And I think I'll probably put these back out into my garden just to give it a little bit of pop of color. Um, but if you don't have a garden, you can um, start a garden in your room and just have it in there. Um, I also know that sometimes when people leave inspirational messages on rocks like these, they'll just leave them like out in public places for other people to find. So maybe once, you know, all this quarantine ends, we could do that just to kind of spread a little bit of positivity through our rocks and just, you know, bring a little bit of brightness into our gardens. That's always kind of fun. I think I'm just gonna do blue as like the background and then maybe do some green polka dots on top. I think that would look really cute. I really like polka dots and I also really like like um, that chevron pattern. I think that's really cool, but that's kind of hard to do. So I think I'm just gonna keep it simple and do just like some polka dots or something like that. So, awesome, awesome, awesome. I'm 
almost done with my blue background. I think I'm just going to do the top um, of my rock. I'm not going to do like the whole thing. Just kind of get this top layer going on here. Make sure that I get it all covered so that you're not seeing any rock come through. All right, so I think that looks nice. Gonna brush off my, wipe off my brush I have right here. Actually, I'm gonna use a little bit of a smaller one for my polka dots. Oh, let me see here. All right. I'm gonna start with my green polka dots. Do that on my rock. Just going to do a couple of little polka dots on here in a different color, give a little bit more of a pop. All right, and there's my rock. So I just left the underside of it bare, but if you want, you can definitely, um, you know, paint the whole thing. You just probably have to let it dry a little bit more so that you can, you know, be doing all the sides of it. But I'm just gonna put that one right here for now. I'm gonna go into my bigger one. I think I'm gonna do a word on this one because I think those are kind of fun. Get out my... I'm not going to use purple. I'll just use blue and green again. Maybe this time I will do the whole thing green. Do it just a little different than I did last time. Again, I think I'm just going to do the top of this one. I think it's just a little bit easier. Maybe do the top and the sides. And just leave the one side bare. But again, that is totally up to you how you want to design your rock. Today is kind of all about just being creative, doing whatever you want, whatever kind of feels right in the moment. And that is what do-it-yourself is all about. Just kind of doing whatever feels right, doing whatever you like. Even if you're not the most creative or the most artistic person, that is okay, I'm certainly not. I, you know, see things online and I'm like, wow, I wish I could do something like that. Wish I could make things like that, but, you know, it's always good to give it a try, try new things. Maybe you'll find something that you're really good at. Maybe you'll find something that you're really passionate about. But you'll never know if you don't try. It's always kind of good to try try new things, try things that you know you never heard of before, you've never tried before. So I just got my just kind of two sides on this one. It's kind of a funny shape, but I think that's the best side to sit it on. Okay, I'm gonna wash out my brush here. All right, dry it off a little bit. All right, and then I'm gonna oh, let me wash this off a little bit more. All right, and then I'm gonna use my blue again. I really like blues and greens. Those are kind of my two favorite colors. 
All right, wash this brush off. Make sure they don't have any green left on there. You don't want our two colors mixing. All right, and then I'm gonna take up my blue again. And I'm going to write hope on mine. Again, if you don't wanna do any words, you could just do another pattern or something on your rock. There we go. Colors are mixing a little bit, but that's okay. There we go, that worked out a little bit better. Also, my rock's not very big, so trying to do a big word wouldn't work very well, so. Hope is a nice small word I think will fit nicely on my rock. So again, if we have anybody just joining us, we are doing the senior room makeover badge today as kind of a do-it-yourself project. Um, but anybody of all ages is welcome to join us. We'll be doing some activities that work for every age level. Um, so if you're not a senior, you can, you know, you can join along with us while we are doing these activities. Well, I think this looks good. I might just do a little bit of an extra layer on some of these letters so that they really stick out. And again, today is all about whatever you want to do. So if you know you want to paint something a little bit different on your rock, you go ahead and do that. That's awesome. We would love to see your pictures once you guys are finished up with some of these projects. So if you want to comment on those once this video is over in the next couple of days, we would love to see those. So, you know, see what you guys are doing with us here. That would be awesome. All right. Well, I finished up that one. Just have it say hope. I think it's kind of a nice message to have right now. So I'm gonna set that one over to the side to dry. And I think I'm just gonna do this last one. My last little, really little guy that I found outside. I think I'm just gonna do this one green. We have a couple of little options for our fairy garden that we're making. Oh, this one's nice and small. Which I kind of like having, you know, three different sizes. Three different, um, you know, patterns to go with our fairy garden. So, I get the sides of this one. And you can get the, the back on this one. I'll do the whole one on this one because it's kind of small. So I can get the, the whole thing painted pretty quickly. So. Like I said before, this, the kind of smoother the rock is, I think the easier it is to paint. So if you can find some, you know, some real smooth ones out in your garden, I think that those will probably work the best for this kind of a project. It might be a little bit harder to get all the crevices if you have a really kind of 
wonky and kind of um, rigid or ragged rock. So, all right, so we have our three rocks as part of our fairy garden. I'm just gonna put my paint to the side. Put my paintbrushes away. The next thing that we are going to do is we're going to um, build a structure for our fairy garden. So what you're gonna need for this one is gonna be your popsicle sticks. Or if you have, you know, a little wooden birdhouse or, you know, a little wooden something like that, that would work well for this. We're just gonna build a little bit, a little structure to put with our fairy garden. So I'm just gonna use some popsicle sticks. I think they're really fun and versatile. You can really do anything with popsicle sticks. Some glue, I have um, both liquid and the stick, you know, just in case. Any scissors if you, you know, wanna cut up your wood in any way. Um, just be super, super careful if you are gonna be cutting up your wood. Um, so again, we are going to be building a little fairy house to go in our uh, fairy garden along with our rocks. Um, so again, with this one, it really is kind of up to you. You can do square structures, you could do a triangle, you could do really anything you want. I think I'm just gonna go with the classic square little guy. Um, so I think those are the easiest. So just gonna take some glue on the ends of my sticks and then put these other sticks on top. You can put it down. You guys can see. I think I'm just going to go for kind of a simple little box tower. Let's see. Put some of this back. There we go. So you guys can see what I'm doing. Put a little bit more glue here on the ends. Just do a little glue dollop. And then put this right on here. Make sure that that glue dries up a little bit. Make sure our, whoop, make sure our structure is good and strong. Just kind of pushing these ends together to make sure that that glue is really sticking. It's getting a little bit wobbly. You know, sometimes if you put one there in the middle, that kind of helps stabilize it a little bit. So I'm going to do that. Just do a little dab in the middles. And then put it right in here. Okay. Let that dry up a little bit. All right. Letting that dry. So again, this can be used for both the senior room makeover badge and the junior, or no, yeah, junior gardener badge. So both of those can be used for this very structure that we're doing here. 
I think I'm going to double this one up a little bit. This is going to be the bottom of my structure, so I want to make sure that it's good and sturdy. I'm just going to do another little round here and here. Make sure that these are on here real good. here and here. Mm -hmm. And then one final one for this last. Ooh. This last little wall that we have here. So let's see. All right. All right. Oops. Just make sure it's not gluing down to my newspaper either. We don't want that. good. Glue is going everywhere. Make sure that we get a good amount of glue going here for our side. We'll make sure that this one is good and strong. So we definitely don't want that falling over. It's kind of gonna hold it a little extra tight. Yeah, another one going on this side. have a little bit of glue on them so they're trying to stick to my fingers. Okay, maybe that wasn't the greatest idea. So maybe we'll we'll just continue to build our tower up this way. Obviously that's gonna take a lot longer, but that's alright. Sometimes it's nice to have projects that are a little bit more time consuming. Get all of our glue dots going there. All right. And we're just going to keep going, building up our tower. And you guys can do any sort of shape that you like, that you think would look nice for your fairy tower, for our little fairy garden that we're building. Also, once your structure dries, you could paint that as well to kind of go along with your rocks that you made. That would be really nice to kind of bring it all together, I think. All right. All 
Awesome, looking good. Again, scrolling down a little bit to my newspaper. All right, so I think this is a good start for our structures. I'll let this dry up a little bit so that we have a good strong foundation that we can kind of build on top of. Again, I'm going to set that over to the side. Put my popsicle sticks and my glue away. And we will move on to the next step. All right. So our next step is to redo something. Um, so I was thinking of doing a tie-dye of a old pillowcase. So I have um, and just a solid white pillowcase that has never been used. <laughs> um, and then we are going to tie dye this using natural dyes. So what you will need for this is your pillowcase. And then um, we are going to use dried black beans to dye this. It's kind of a like bluish, grayish color that it comes out as, um, but it looks really nice. And I think it's, it's kind of a really cool, different color. Um, so I think it's neat to use natural dyes. Um, I've never really done it before, um, but I think it's really cool that you can just use things that you have at home, like black beans, and that can be used to, you know, dye an old pillowcase that you have. Um, so we have our pillowcase. This one's kind of big. It's for um, it's a king size pillowcase, so it's kind of large. Um, but you can do all kinds of different patterns for um, your tie dye. So some of the the ones that I like is the bullseye. And so what you're going to do is take your pillowcase right in the middle and just kind of pinch it up and pull it through. We're just kind of pinching right here in the middle and then bringing it together on the ends. And then you'll put your rubber bands around here in different spots. And that will create a really cool bullseye um, for your tie dye. You could also do a swirl, which is another cool one. So what you're gonna do for that one is again, you're gonna start in the middle of your pillowcase and pinch in the middle like this and then twirl. And it'll start to form this kind of twisted pattern. You're just gonna keep going in the middle and pinching and the rest of the fabric will kind of come in. We're gonna twist, 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 twist until you have the whole thing twisted. You kind of have to grab it in multiple spots to kind of finish the twist. Then it ends up looking like this. And then you'll put your rubber bands around. It'll kind of form little pieces of pie. And that'll create a really nice swirl pattern on your pillow. Another one that you can do is um, you can just kind of do like a fold it like a fan. You just kind of go forward, fold, and then a backwards fold, and another forward fold, and a backwards fold. And it does kind of like this fan pattern, kind of like, I don't know if you can see it very well, but it does a nice fan pattern. And then you can put your bands around it like that. It does sort of a stripey pattern. 
So that is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to get my rubber bands and I'm going to rubber band where I want the stripes to be. So again, with tie dye, any pattern that you put on your ties with is going to look really cool. I've never seen a tie dye that I didn't like. I think tie dye is so cool. Um, you can do kind of the craziest looking things with your rubber bands and they come out looking so cool. So again, whatever kind of a pattern you feel like using, I think will look great. So I am doing sort of a stripey pattern. I folded up my pillowcase in like a fan fold. And now I am just putting on the rubber bands. I think I'm just gonna do four rubber bands. Trying to keep them about the same length apart, but that can be kind of hard. You want to make your rubber bands as tight as possible because we don't want the dye leaking through our rubber bands. So these middle ones are a little bit harder to get than those ones on the end. All right, that one looks good. And then we'll do one final one here on the end. All right. All right, so again, I folded it as in sort of a fan back and forth fashion. Then I just put my rubber bands on here. A couple different spots. Made sure that my rubber bands were nice and tight so that no um, dye can, can get through there. So we're also going to get a bucket this in here real quick. I have one bucket that has my dyed water in it and then one that is just water. So this one is just water and then this one is my dyed. Um, so I have a shirt in there already because I wanted to show you guys the final product or not shirt, it's a, um, another pillowcase. So what you do is you put your black beans in your bucket and then you add a lot of water to it, um, a little bit more than you really think that you'll need because the beans will soak up some of the initial water that you put in there. Um, I let mine sit overnight um, so that you can get all of the dye to come out of those beans. Stir it occasionally um, and then once you've let it sit overnight, you strain all of the beans out into a new bucket. Um, so you, you know, you don't want to be getting bits of beans on whatever you're tie dyeing. Um, so I let mine sit overnight. So I did this last night, um, strained it this morning and then put this pillowcase in there. Um, this morning, probably two or three hours ago. And I've just been letting it sit in here since then. Um, so I, I'm just kind of squeezing all of the water out of this one that I have been letting sit in here for a while. So again, I let the beans sit overnight in the water. Um, and then I let the shirts or the, I'm sorry, the, pillowcase sit in here for two or three hours. The longer you let it sit, the brighter the color is going to be because it's really kind of saturating in there. And this is the color that came out. So I think it's a cool kind of 
bluish gray color. I think it turned out really, really nicely. Again, if the longer that you let it sit, the longer that you let one the beans sit and two the sh the pillowcase sit in the in the dye, the more colorful that's going to come out. So now I'm just going to take off the rubber bands that I had on here. You can see where the rubber bands were. Still nice and white. I think this is going to come out looking really cool. I'm so excited to see how this turned out. I did the same sort of pattern with this one. I did the fan, folded it like the fan, and then put on the rubber bands. Just peeling these rubber bands off. Get those out of the way. Get this out of the way so you can really see it. Right, let's see how it came out. Wow. This looks really, really cool. I'm really happy with the way that this turned out. So I am just going to um, wash this in the sink again, just kind of to get make sure that all of that all of the dye is out of there, um, and then wash it in the washer by itself again, just to make sure that none of the dye bleeds on anything. Um, it should be fine since it is a natural dye that we made with um, black beans. Um, but you know, just to be safe, I'm going to wash it separately. And then I have this awesome tie-dyed pillowcase. Pillowcase that you know that I hadn't really been using for anything and now it has a cool new design that I can put in my room, which I think I think is really cool. So again just one more time you're gonna let the the beans sit in water overnight and then you will um, strain out the beans into a new pot. Put your shirt in there, let that, or whatever you're tie dyeing, your pillowcase or your shirt in there and let that sit for a few hours. Once you um, take off all of your rubber bands, you want to just make sure that you wash it through again um, just with water and then put it in the washing machine by itself just in case so we don't want anything to um, to get dyed by that on accident. So it's always good just kind of to do, to do it by itself. So the, um, also that um, the tie dyeing can be used for the Brownie Household Elf badge. Um, one of their steps is to do, um, to do something natural and to reuse or recycle. Um, so using the natural dye is really great for that and reusing the pillowcase, you're kind of upcycling that. So that works for that badge as well. So the last thing that we are going to do today, I'm also really excited about this one, is um, string art. So I have a little wooden tree circle here. Um, you can use any type of wooden thing that you can hammer nails into. So um, we have that, we have our little piece of wood, we have nails, just a whole pack of nails, a hammer, and some string. So I have just this kind of um, natural looking string, but you can do any type of string that you would like. And what we're going to do is make a design with our nails and then use the string to wrap around the nails and in between the nails and it'll make this really cool looking um, string art on our piece of wood. So this step also can be used in the Cadet Woodworkers badge. Um, one of the steps is to make a design with nails. And that is exactly what we're doing. Um, so again, we're letting our creative juices flow. Whatever sort of a design you want to do, I would say first sketch it out on your piece of wood. Um, I think I want to do a trefoil because I think that would be really cute. Um, and I think 
when you do nail string art, having something that's a little bit more circular is good um, because then you can really get the string like in between all of your different nails. So I'm gonna start by sketching out my design on my piece of wood. So, and again, I think I've said this already, I'm not the most artistic, but that's okay because I'm just doing this to have fun. No real pressure to have it look perfect or anything, although I do want it a little bit centered. So <laughs> I'm gonna erase that mark. But again, whatever kind of a design that you wanna do, if you wanna do a letter, that could be something cute that you could like put on your, on the wall of your room. You could do all kinds of different designs, spirals, could look really cool with string art. You could do a star. You could do a trefoil along with me. That would be fun. But really any sort of a design that you can think of, I think would look really cool with this string art. So I'm just sketching out my trefoil. I'm not making it too big. Um, so we're going to have this string kind of coming back and forth in between. Again, just sketching it out, erasing some of the marks that I don't like as much. And just kind of making it my own design as well. All right, so I think I like this. I like the size. I like the placement. All right, so I have my trefoil traced out on there like that. So the next one I'm gonna do I'm gonna take my nails, and again, we wanna be super, super careful with these. We wanna have adult supervision while we are working with nails and hammers. And we wanna just be very, very careful while we do this. Opening up my nails. All right, I'm gonna take a nail this down so you guys can see it a little bit better. All right, I'm going to take a nail and just following my design that I've drew, I'm going to put these nails in here. Again, I'm just going to be super duper careful using my nails and my hammer. All right. I'm going to start in, in kind of the the corners if you have those and then just following along with our design. I'm going to hammer in these nails. You don't want it to go through to the other side but you want it to be able to be to stand up on its own. So we're just going to be super duper careful. Maybe have mom or dad help us out with the nail portion of this. You want them to be want to have them separated out just a little bit. They don't need to be right on top of each other. Oh, it's upside down and then just following through with our, our trefoil pattern with our nails. All right. All right, 
Again, I'm just being very careful with my nails and my hammer. So you really want to get it in there so that they don't fall out. So again, just being extra careful. I would recommend having mom or dad supervise with this part. All right. Let me get this one a little bit more. He was looking a little wobbly. All right. I'm just following my pattern that I drew. I'm gonna have a nail kind of where there's each, where there's a change in direction because we're going to use our string. To fill in the lines between them. So where we kind of see that there's a change in direction, that would be a good place to put a nail. So where you have a curve, where you have a corner, any of those places are gonna be a good spot to put one of our nails. I think it does get a little bit easier as you go. You kind of get a feel for how hard you need to be pushing, how far you need to push it in. Also, if you're following along with us, this recording, this is being recorded and we will um, have it posted back up on our Facebook page once we're done, so you can have an opportunity to watch it back. And be able to pause where you need to and those sorts of things. So, whoops, somebody fell out, so let me get, remember that on a little bit more. That's a little bit better. All right, I have one little clover left on my trefoil. Do maybe two more here. The dogs walk around. I don't think he likes doing this. And this will be the last one that we'll put in here. And then we will start with the string. Here is what it looks like with all of the nails in there. You can see I just kind of followed the pattern that I drew on there. Kind of trying to um, put a nail where there is a direction change. Now what I'm going to do is take my string, unravel it a little bit. We're going to tie it around this bottom nail here. You can really start anywhere, but I think this one will be easiest to 
start with. Make a knot here on the end. It's okay if there's a little bit of excess around the edge. You can definitely cut that off once you finish or kind of tuck it in. All right. So I have this string tied right there on the bottom. Then I'm going to take the string and I'm going to wrap it around my nails. I'm just kind of going to, oop, well, that one fell out, so I'm going to put it back in. Wrap our string around. One quick wrap there. Bring it around our next string, our next nail. Wrap it around there. And around the next nail. And the next nail. Oops. Yep, so we really want to make sure that our nails are in there really well. But they're not popping up when you're trying to wrap your string around. Again, okay, just kind of wrapping anyway so that it flows nice, nicely next on onto the next one. All right, and right now we're just going around these outer ones. Kind of following our shape that we made. And wrapping our string around. each of our individual nails around the outside. Okay. So that is what it looks like after I've wrapped it around. There we go. You can see it's Definitely taking the trefoil shape, which is awesome. Now it was just wrapping around the outside. And then to make it look a little bit more full, we're also going to just kind of wrap each around each other. So I'm starting at the bottom. I'm gonna to go to this one up here. Then I'm getting them at the bottom. And then I'm gonna to go to the next one right here. And then I'm going to come and I'm pushing them down as I do it as well. Kind of pushing it down. Then I'm going to come back to the bottom. Go to this next one here. And back to the bottom. And around the next one. As you can see, it's kind of filling it in. As we just kind of wrap around. All right, oh, this one's kind of falling over, so I'm gonna stick that one in a little bit. All right. This one right here. Come back down and do this one here and back around the bottom. Do this one here, and back and back. That kind of shows you what it looks like there on that half. And then I'm going to continue that on this side as well. Just kind of continuously going back and forth between the top and the bottom to get this to get this look of the string in between.
and you can do that with your shape as well going back and forth between you know the top and the bottom the sides however you want to do it to kind of get this cool stringed look so that is all of our steps for today um, again so we did we created our vision board we painted our rocks and we made our fairy structure for our fairy garden we tie-dyed using a natural dye. We tie-dyed a old um, pillowcase or t-shirt if you have that as well. And then we made our string art. So these are just a couple of awesome DIY projects that you guys can do while you are home and outside of school. Um, so thank you guys so much for joining me. Again, this will be posted on our Facebook page um, so you can go back and watch it again. Um, and I will be looking through the comments after I log off of this and answering any of your questions. So thank you guys so much for joining us, um, and we will see you tomorrow. Bye!